Okay, so this video is looking at how to uh, pull a book and I have a, a book here, it's a second-hand Folio Society book, although I don't think it's ever actually been read, it's in excellent condition. Um, but if we're going to rebind it, create a new binding, then uh, we need to take the original binding off. So the first thing to do is have a look at the structure. Uh, we can see it's a case-bound book um, and you also notice that the uh, coloured end paper is just tipped on to the first sheet of the uh, first section. So that's the first thing we need to do. So I'm just going to press down on that first sheet there firmly and pull up on the coloured end paper as I open it up and just start to pull that away. It usually comes away pretty easily as you can see. Same on the back. Press down firmly on that and just pull that end paper away where it's glued. Okay. Now if we continue that moment, what you, that movement, what you'll see is that you can start to see between the end papers um, the basically what is the mull. And that's what we need to slit. So of course we need to be careful not to damage the fold of the first section here. So we're just going to basically put a knife through the hollow like so and just gently slice up. And as we do this I'm continuing to pull apart the board from the book. So exposing basically the mull, a bit fiddly, but take your time. As I say, we need to be careful not to damage the pages. Doesn't matter if I damage the end paper in this case, I'm not going to be using the end paper again. As you get further into it, it becomes a little easier. There we go. So we've separated out the first end paper. You can see there the spine lining uh, and the uh, spine stiffener. So same again on the other side. We've already pulled that up. Let's pull a bit further to reveal the mull or whatever material they've used. Knife into the hollow and just split the mull. going quite nicely. So we've now removed the book from the boards. So now we get a first look at what's happening on the spine and we see there's a paper uh, lining we've got stuck on end bands so I'm just going to peel those end bands off Again, we won't be using those, they're potentially you could, if they're in good condition, you could always save them and use them elsewhere. Like so. Peel off any loose bits of paper. Okay, so that's the first part of the process. Okay, so the next phase of this is to uh, remove the, the paper that's lining the spine. Uh, and all I'm going to do with that, I've got it in a press just to support it vertically. And I'm just going to apply some paste. Um, I tend to use pre-prepared paste for, for simplicity rather than making my own because I'm lazy. But um, it's, it's good stuff actually, it works very well. And all this is doing is, is soaking into the paper uh, to soften it and to soften potentially any glue that's underneath uh, so that we can remove it. Um, ultimately we want to get as much glue and spine lining off this as we possibly can. Um, but these days with plastic adhesives, hot melt adhesives and so on, it's actually rather difficult. So it's always a bit of an experiment to see what works. But whatever happens, we've got to get this paper off first at the very least. So that's what we're doing here. So plenty of paste on. 
We use paste rather than just water, by the way, because water will just soak through into the paper uh, of, of the actual text block. Here we want it to kind of sit on top and just moisten it. So I'm going to leave that like that <clears throat> and to stop it evaporating, I'm just going to put a, <clears throat> a, a piece of uh, plastic on. This is just cut from an old carrier bag, just on the top. So that will stop it evaporating and I can leave it there now for maybe 10 minutes, something like that. And uh, then we'll come back and have a look, see how it, uh, how it goes. Okay, so that's been on there for about uh, 10 or 15 minutes. So I'll just take that off. I'll get a bit of scrap paper. A bit of scrap paper which we use for the glue. And I'm just going to have a go at scraping this off and see what happens. Um, now it looks like the, the brown lining paper is coming off reasonably well. So that's good. Let's take off as much of that as we can. Oop. Let's see what else comes off. Okay. Well, basically, I think just about all of the paper has come off there. Um, what's left, the white, is essentially the glue. Uh, and this has does appear to have got one of the, the modern um, plasticized hot glues, which can be a bit of a nightmare to get off, but it's a good, good illustration of what to do in these circumstances. So I'm getting off any remnants of paper. As I'm doing so, I'm getting off a little bit of the white, actually. Okay, I'm, I'm noticing at the ends that where the paste has been, some of the white is actually coming off. So I'm going to have another go and put another coating of paste on to see if it loosens this. Um, and uh, hopefully it will be more straightforward than it could be. Um, we will see that sometimes the the, uh, the hot melt plastic glue simply doesn't come off at all, doesn't soften or anything with water. And um, there are a number of ways of dealing with that. But of course the main thing is not to damage the, the folds of the paper beneath, if at all possible. Otherwise you have to get into regarding the pages and so on. Um, so... Um, We'll see if that happens, but we'll give this another go. Sometimes, you, but even even with the paper, sometimes you have to apply paste two, three, four times to make sure it all comes off. Um, so it's worth being patient. Um, incidentally, if you don't have normal bookbinders paste, you could use wallpaper paste for this. Just make up some thick wallpaper paste. It's not going to be on the book for very long, so even if it's not acid free, it doesn't really make a deal of difference. You're going to be scraping it off. So um, that's an alternative. Okay, so that's the, the glue gone back on. We'll put the plastic back on and we'll leave that for another 10 minutes and see what happens. So that's been soaking for another uh, 10 or 15 minutes. So we'll take that off and give it a scrape and see what happens. Yeah, some of some of the, the white material is coming off. So it could be a sort of a crepe material. In fact, it is. You can see it peeling there. So it's another layer of lining, essentially. That's good. So we'll just scrape all that off, which takes a little while, but it's just being patient. So I'll do that, and you come back in a moment. That's most of that crepe off. Um, you can start to see the, the uh, printer's marks, known as the signatures, uh, on each of the sections. They're used just to show the printer that the book is in the correct order and all the sections are present. So there's actually quite, only quite a thin layer left on there. Now I suspect with this that we've got another layer of crepe glued onto that. It clearly has a waterproof Oh, sorry, a, uh, a water-soluble glue on it. So I'm going to give this a third pasting. Uh, and I'm hopeful that that might um, get most of it off. Now, if this wasn't the case, and if this was a plastic uh, waterproof glue, 
as some modern books do have. Um, as I say, it can be very difficult. The, the way I tend to do it is I get as much as I can off by scraping. Um, if it's a very thick layer, I'll even slice it off very carefully, either with a scalpel or with a mini plane that I have, a modeler's plane, just to thin it. Uh, and then I heat it gently with a hairdryer. And as I'm doing so, I can then scrape off the softened plasticized glue. Uh, and uh, that often is a, a way to achieve what you need to do. So there it is with a third layer of glue on paste rather. So I'll put that back on there and leave it for another 10 minutes. It's another 10 or 15 minutes gone. So let's have a look at this. Now, yeah, again, more is coming off. And I can start to see the folds of some of the um, sections. So just doing this basically is going to be sufficient. Um, I may need another application of paste. Yeah, I will. But it is coming off. And I don't know if you can see that or not, but just here, there are, uh, you can see the actual folds and uh, uh, creases in between the sections and so on. So we are getting right down to where we need to be. So I'll finish off doing that. I will put another application of paste on, which I'm hopeful will be the final one. And then um, we should be ready to move on to the next stage. I'm just halfway through taking off this final layer of paste um, and you can see that now we're seeing the ridges of the of the backs of the sections so as I continue to do this what I have to be careful of is not to damage the paper uh, of the folds of the sections because that would essentially produce holes in the uh, the outer leaves of those sections so this needs to, to happen slowly carefully patiently uh, just taking off as much as you can, but making sure that we're not damaging the paper. Um, what we will find is there is still a little adhesive in between, it's sort of in the grooves in between the sections. Uh, that's much more difficult to get out at this stage. So what I'm, I'm not too bothered about that because what we'll do is when we've separated out the sections, um, we can remove those from backs of those individually. Um, so I'm just going to continue working on this and get all of the rest of this glue off um, and then we can move on. The next stage of this process then, having got rid of the majority or all of the, uh, the, the glue and the spine linings, um, is to now separate out the sections. Uh, we're going to be re-sewing the book. Uh, although, you know, the, the rounding and backing on this isn't too bad. The shoulders are very narrow. It's not really been properly backed. So um, we do need to undo it, re-sew it, um, round it and back it ourselves in, ready, in readiness for a new design binding. So in order to do this, um, we need to understand the, the structure of the sections, how many pages are in each. A good first guess is four pages in. Yeah, and you should be able to see the, uh, the sewing there. So if you then go another one, two, three, four, that will be the end of your section. And essentially we need to separate it out there. So sometimes you can see through this point and um, just separate it because of course there's still a bit of glue there. And essentially what you're doing is going through the sewing uh, when you get to the, the sections where the sewing crosses over. You have to be a little bit careful, of course. You don't want to damage the, the folds of the paper again. So very carefully, just going through essentially the, the remaining glue. So that's one way of doing it. The other way of doing it is go back to the areas where the sewing is and 
cut through each of the each of the sewn um, sections. So all the sewing threads are gone through there. So that will help us to pull it apart. So you don't necessarily need to cut through them all at this point. Um, just peel it away from the section beneath nice and carefully. Anything's a bit um, difficult then cut through it. And you can you can start to see the glue that's that's left in between the sections and that's attached to the sewing threads. So as we go through this that can all be gently peeled away again without damaging the folds of the paper. So I'm going to go through all of the book. I'm going to separate out all of the sections. I'm going to go into the middle and remove all of all of the bits of thread that might be left. So we've got a set of nice clean thread free sections. So I'll do that now and then we'll get back and have a look at the last bit. Just one point whilst you're doing this, um, when you if you're cutting through the threads uh, and you're pulling the section off, just be aware of what the threads are doing because if you're pulling a thread that for some reason is reluctant to come out through the hole, what you may end up doing is splitting the section, in other words the thread will cut through the paper. So if you're finding that a thread is a little resistant then just cut it first like that and then you can actually remove it from the centre of the section. Um, the other thing also to consider is, try and get that out, yeah, that way. Um, the, other, the other thing to consider is um, the pages themselves may still be stuck together because glue will have gone through the holes where the sewing is. Um, so they need to be kind of eased out. So the way I tend to do that is start in the middle and just pull the middle, middle page away. And again, just be aware of what's happening. Make sure that nothing's going to slice through the fold of the paper. Um, now clearly this, this is a part of the process that takes quite a while. Um, so there's a lot of patience involved in this, uh, in pulling a book like this, but it's worth it. It's worth it in the end. Now here I'm finding there's a little bit of resistance because the glue has been pulled through the holes of the outer page. So just be careful. If we do have a problem, if we find, for example, the outer page has got a slit in it or the holes are too big, what we'll end up doing is putting a little piece of Japanese tissue or a good, a good strong but very thin tissue over the slit, over the hole uh, that won't be seen in the final uh, book structure, but it will give it that extra strength. The other thing that may help as you go through this is that these books clearly are machine sewn uh, and you often get clumps of um, sewing thread that are knotted together and that can make it difficult to pull off the, uh, the next section. So if you find that you're getting clumps like this just, just cut them off. It just makes it easier for the next section to be removed. Similarly with the, uh, the bits of glue and so on. It's good good time in which to do that. But it does it does help. All of the sections are now separated. Um, nice and clean. Any bits of glue and thread have been removed. Um, and uh, that's kind of ready for sewing. Uh, there is just one more thing to do which is to remove any swell that's in the spine due to the original uh, rounding and backing of the book. Um, so in order to do that uh, you need to call, uh, what's called knock down the sections. Um, this is a knocking down iron which you, some of you will be familiar with. Uh, it, it's held in the press like that. The section goes on the top. There's a piece of paper goes on the top of there and it's knocked down with a hammer 
like that. Um, if you don't have one of these, that's fine. Just use a good hard surface. Um, again, piece of clean paper on the top to protect it. Uh, if it's particularly bent, uh, if there's a particularly strong shoulder on there, then um, you can just uh, press it down a little bit with a bone folder. Otherwise, piece of clean paper and knock it down like that. Um, do that for all of the sections that have got uh, some discernible shoulder on them. Um, doesn't do any harm to do all of the sections actually to get them nice and flat at the spine edge. Um, and then put that between boards in the press um, so that it's a nice flat book section ready for piercing and sewing uh, and going on to the next stage of binding.